Hello, it's Colin Kelly from Comsteria here again. Um, we've been really busy lately making podcasts for clients, which have been quite interesting and doing quite a lot of media training as well. Um, but I wanted to share this tip with you, I suppose. Um, it's a little trick that newspapers like to do. And I think a lot of organisations, especially some of our clients um, involved in politics or maybe larger companies that sometimes get criticism in the media, uh, they sometimes fall into this little trap that newspapers set. And so what often happens is that the newspaper will go to somebody, maybe it's the family of somebody that's been involved in a terrible sort of health situation, they've been let down by the NHS, or um, you know they've sort of fallen between the cracks in terms of the social justice system. There was one recently the Daily Record did, and it was all about bullying. And they'd gone, they'd had this long conversation with this anti-bullying activist who said that she'd written a letter to the First Minister because I need you to do something about bullying. And so what, what went in the newspaper was three or four pages of real emotion and first-person accounts of, of bullying and specific cases and how dreadful it was. And this this woman, this activist, is just trying to get the First Minister to listen, to do something, to help, to take it seriously. So you get three or four pages of this, and then at the very last paragraph, the newspaper has asked the Scottish Government for a comment, and they get three or four lines. right? Cold, generic, quite detached and basically refusing to accept any sort of weakness or issue with their their strategy, basically just telling us what we already know, we take bullying seriously, and we've got a strategy to deal with this. And we see this happen often, particularly with tabloid newspapers, where they go really big on drama and emotion and first-person accounts and very specific cases, probably several of them. And then this very cold, corporate, empty statement right at the end. So what that does is it makes the organisation look extremely defensive. And it's very easy for the audience to feel very sympathetic to the, the case study, if you like, the activist that's being presented. They come across as very nice and reasonable and very caring. And we read about these cases that they mention and we think, oh my God, that's awful, that's terrible. And I understand why the coverage goes the way it does, because, of course, the government can't comment, or they don't want to comment on specific cases. They might not know enough about them, or they might be subject to some formal proceedings, police investigation. It would be wrong for the government to, to make comment on specific situations. Now, I sometimes think that they could say a lot more than they do, but I can certainly understand their caution. What I think you need to need to really look at, though, is that when the newspaper approaches the the organisation, they don't say, you know, here's the here's the four pages. Look, here's what we're doing. Uh, what would you like us to say about you? Right. What they'll do is they'll phone up and they'll say, we've spoken to an anti-bullying activist. Uh, she's really concerned. Do you have a statement for us? Do you have a response? Now. Sometimes, if, if you're the organisation, sometimes you could ask for more information. You could say, well, who is it? What have they told you? Um, are they referring to specific cases? You could probe a little bit, see what more you could find out, and maybe maybe you could give a little bit more. Because what you really want to get across is, is, is not the, the bare minimum, we're doing fine, leave us alone. What you want to get across is, look, we share your concern. We, this is awful. Wow, These anybody that's gone through this has our absolute sympathy. We need to make sure that this doesn't happen. Right? You need to say more than just this cold, empty statement. So sometimes getting a little bit more information can be helpful. Sometimes just adding a little bit of emotion to your statement. Right? You, you can still get a bit of... We all know that bullying's bad. We all know that people shouldn't be waiting 16 hours on, uh, on, on, on a hospital trolley. Right? We, we, know, we take all that for granted. Nobody would suggest that that's you know, normal service. And you can still comment on that without making reference to that specific situation. You could still say, 
you know, schools should be a safe place. Nobody should be getting bullied in our school. My heart goes out to anybody that experiences bullying. It's a dreadful thing to go through. You could still say all of that. You could also soften your statement, maybe by attributing it to an actual living person rather than just a spokesperson. And I think when we do media training and I go into organisations and they show me their system and how they deal with uh, a reactive uh, inquiry, how they deal with reactive media uh, engagements. And it, it, it all makes sense and I know why you do it the way you do it. But the problem is that the the public don't care about that. They just read what they read in the newspapers or what goes on TV or what comes out the radio. And I think you need to think carefully about, well, are there situations where, yes, this is our minimum service level. You know, yes, normally this is what we would say, but the story's already big. It's three or four pages with, you know, somebody put, pouring their heart out to the Daily Record. Do you really want to give them 90% of the story? or 95% of the story, and then this really cold, empty, dismissive, meaningless statement right at the end for the last three or four sentences. So I think it's sometimes it's knowing when to move beyond the bare minimum. Give a bit of colour, give a bit of emotion. Above all, just show that you care. Um, these stories in newspapers are, I think, are very influential in terms of building up this picture of a government, a local authority, an organisation that is out of touch and doesn't care. And it might not do you any damage in the immediate term, but over weeks and months and years, it all adds up and it will eventually be reflected in the ballot box.